A likely centerpiece of today's budget will be a new agency to fund high-risk, high-reward scientific research. Brainchild of the Prime Minister's Chief Special Advisor Dominic Cummings, the Advanced Research Projects Agency, UPA, is to be modeled after similar bodies in the U.S., most notably DARPA which has focused on defense-related research. DARPA has a mythical status in the world of research funding, especially in its most early years. It is a high-risk funder which seeks out key areas to fund which are not yet ready for the private sector to step in. It was an early investor in computer networking which eventually sparked the invention of the Internet, for example, and funded work at Xerox which led to modern-day home computers. But while the idea of ARPA has garnered support from some of the research policy community, the biggest issue this fledgling new agency will face is our political and public intolerance for failure. DARPA works like a venture capital firm, recognizing that most of the projects it backs will fail, but that the massive success of a small number will make it worthwhile. The UK press, however, likes nothing more than picking over the carcass of government failure. The papers will no doubt give plenty of their time to the annual reports of an agency that expects the majority of its investments to fail. Cast your mind ahead a few years, this government's honeymoon period with the public will be over, and Boris Johnson will undoubtedly face a more coherent opposition. If its key proponents are working on other things by then, who knows how long Cummings intends to remain in Downing Street, ARPA might find itself a lonely organization with few defenders. Good policies can die without public support. Matthew Taylor, a policy chief under the Blair government, regrets that the initiative which was his proudest achievement, the Child Trust Fund, was later cut with little public protest. It was, in his view, a well-crafted policy, but it suffered from a long payback period and little public engagement. It's easy to see how ARPA could suffer the same fate. You need look no further than the UK's weak productivity growth over the last decade to observe how desperately we need greater support for moving the results of research out of university settings in order to influence innovation across industry and public services. Unfortunately, even US attempts to create similar bodies to DARPA in energy research and intelligence have not been spectacular successes. So how can the new UK ARPA maximize its chances? Clarity of purpose is key. The government has sometimes talked about APA as a body to focus on blue sky basic research, but existing research funders should have this covered. It is widely accepted that the UK's pure research is outstanding, but that we are less strong at commercializing it. The gap in the funding landscape is in here for more on this story, visit the news article link.